Hey Guru Nation, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. It really means a lot to me. I got asked this question today from a YouTube comment actually. It says, hey, do you have an investigator site file checklist? Also known as a regulatory binder, by the way. Did you guys know that? So one that a sponsor would use when monitoring a site to ensure that they have all that's needed to maintain the ISF. So from a monitoring perspective, and really from a site perspective too, from both perspectives, it first pays to understand what's in an inform what's in an investigator site file and then we can get into like kind of what's important or what's most important for monitoring because you don't want to say what's important everything's important but from a monitoring perspective from a practical pragmatic approach what's most likely to be necessary for a monitor to look at so the first thing uh let's go through just really quick some of these things so the first section, I'm just looking at one of my investigator site files right now. Um, the outline for what it is, they're all a little bit different, but they all basically are similar. Looking through this thing, the protocol obviously needs to be there. The latest version of the protocol, whatever amendment that is, needs to be in there or a note to file stating where it's located. And from a monitoring perspective, the most important thing really from the protocol is make sure that the protocol signature page for all the latest amendments has been signed and reviewed and signed and dated by the PI. Then make sure that on the protocol training log, you gotta make sure that the staff that are delegated to do those things, uh, whatever those things may be from the delegation of authorities log, have been trained. So make sure from a monitoring perspective, again, this delegation of authorities log is there it's up to date it's current as far as staff that are still working as far as staff that are no longer at the site and then correspond that with their cvs their gcps their protocol training and if they're sub investigators appropriate licenses and financial disclosure forms of course there's a lot of other stuff too gcp has to be updated so some sponsors say every year every two years Whatever the case may be for your study, make sure that you're adhering to that from a monitoring perspective. Uh, another important thing from a monitoring perspective is your monitoring visit log. So make sure you're keeping that up to date every time you go into the site or do a remote site visit. Make sure that you're getting the monitoring visit log. Other study logs inform consent are another log that you got to make sure that the site is maintaining and keeping up to date along with the most recently amended informed consents. So not just the patients that have signed the previous versions, but if they're still in the study during an amendment of the informed consent, that they also signed the amendment for the informed consent. So the latest version of the informed consent. Then investigator supply. So IP, this is where IP accountability comes in. This is where you have to really monitor and don't don't leave investigational product accountability until the closeout visit. You have to make sure sites are properly dispensing, storing, which means looking at temperature logs. Another log there is temperature log. Were there any excursions, temperature excursions, and also dispensing. Another thing you gotta be looking at protocol deviations. Have there been deviations? There's a log for that. When there were protocol deviations that required training, were those trainings documented in the training log? A lot of these things are kind of related to one another. When it comes to clinical lab, really you're just looking whether the site's using a central lab or a local lab. If they're a central lab, you want to get lab reference ranges. If they're a local lab, you want to get local lab reference ranges. Same thing with the IRB. Okay, this is important for the IRB from a monitoring perspective. Make sure that the site is current on its continuing review. Make sure you get the IRB approval. Like, the site can't do anything with the study unless they're getting that continuing review from the IRB. Another important one from a monitoring perspective is SAEs. So whether that's SAE reports from that particular site, not only will they go in the subject source documents, but they will go in the investigator site file usually. And then study-wide, or I should say investigational product-wide, 
SUSARs, suspected unexpected serious adverse reactions. So from a monitoring perspective, if you've got these things more or less taken care of, investigator brochure, I'm trying to see if I missed everything. Investigator brochure also just needs the acknowledgement of receipt from the investigator to sign. Those are relatively straightforward. The things that require your involvement as a monitor are really like training, updating of staff, deviations. Does that trigger another training? Is someone's FDF? Is there a new sub by? Do they need training? Do they need a new financial disclosure form? Was the informed consent amended? Did all the subjects sign it? Is the investigational product being stored properly? Is it being dispensed properly? From a monitoring perspective, those are investigator site file activities. So hopefully this helps. I'm trying to keep this short. Let me know if I missed anything important. I have hour long webinars on investigator site files. If you're curious, just go on the playlist under webinars and you'll see regulatory. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The fundamentals are the same, whether it's from a site perspective or a monitoring perspective. Whatever your role is in the industry, whether it's a coordinator or a CRA at the time, you just have to know what your role is in the context of what's happening during that study. So hopefully this helps out somebody. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Thank you, Guru Nation.